So you should have a search step. And this kid ran power almost every play in high school, so this is like his forte of knowing where the fits are. I just wish he would have gone north and south right there. But this is what we want to do. We want to be able to get in, get that odd front, just leave that guy completely on the backside, don't even need to block him. And when he's on the end like that, you don't even really need anything to do. You can just hand it off and he's not going to be a factor. So as you can see, it, it and like that's what we're looking for because as you saw, a lot of the uh, three by one tight end stuff this year was against Oregon State and it was split zone. And then we had power as the counter. So there are two plays, just like we talked about in the beginning today, is protect your plays and protect your players. Is that's how we protect split zone with a tight end is we're going to run power. Same thing, work through it, screen to this side. He feels that he's coming, so he alerts to it. Guard does a decent job of reading around it and working through. Three, two. Puller's got 21. Downside has to 22. Probably could leave it with one hand, right, like we were talking about. Get a good one-hand punch, especially if you can get it on the hip. And then good to 22. Not bad. Wish he wouldn't try to wrestle him to the ground. Just stay square on him. Okay, same thing. Three by one. Tight end. Pizza slice right there, guy comes during the down block, so the tackle actually picks him up, allows him to go all the way around, and he'll actually just work to that backside backer now. What's that? Oh, yep. But he is taught C7 by that guy, so when he knows that that guy's coming, he's actually going to go away from him because that's actually his guy that he's responsible for staying away from. But when, you, when this guy just dilly-dallies around the line of scrimmage, you never know where he's going to end up. When, when, like when we game plan and we know that we're going to have a down safety, like inserting on one side or the other, we'll alert them that you have a C7 safety to this play and that he's going to be your guy. And you'll, and you'll need to, depending on what run it is, is he'll either need to stay away from him and stay inside the block, or he'll actually need to cut all the way back outside. Really, he's not. He's just got to make sure that there's not, they're not getting seven into the box completely. Um, so, like, right here, like, he's fine. We just, got to, we just have to start worrying about that guy because that's basically now the, C, like, C7 guy. They're just switching responsibilities, and he's the down guy. That The back's got to be able to stay away from him, and that's the danger guy. So we got to eventually be able to throw something out on this side. This has been a big one that I've seen in the Pac-12 is the submarining of when you see pullers, as you saw it on some of the Tampas, is like taking the guy out in the, in the hole. Um, I don't know if it's an actual technique or it's a self-defense mechanism by certain kids, but it's interesting. Okay, again, just like we had star and slip, now we're going to get into power. Uh, I think we tagged this like power extra to tell them that they had an extra guy coming from behind. Um, and same thing that it, when we had it in the Washington State game. Brand new formation, just give them a different look, give them a bunch of new run fits to set up for three or four plays, power, split zone, and a play action. You put a big guy in the back. Yep. Yeah, that, that was the backup center.
how would you handle a backside three? Technique? Stepped and hinged by the tackle, and the center's got to eventually get back down to it. Puller's got to get going, got to get on his horse. As you see that they're not even aligned right, that guy's still running in the game. And that's where, like, I made that reference about Tulsa earlier, where they're, like, they're a gap scheme team traditionally, where we're, we're a zone team, so Foos is, like, our answer of stay on tracks if you don't know what the block is. He has nobody to block. Well, that's your gap that you're responsible for. Just keep going. Somebody's eventually going to show up. Don't just stop. Um, and that's one of the biggest things, whether you're a zone team like us or you start getting into this, is getting them to trust that go, even if nobody's there, because that's a lot of the issue with tempo, is getting your kids to believe that just follow your rules, follow your tracks. Yes, when you have time, make all your calls, but when you don't have time and they're still trying to get lined up or nobody's there, just follow your track. Somebody will show up. If not, you should be leading somebody to the end zone. And it's just getting them to believe in it because then it keeps defenses really honest and really basic. As you see, we kind of liked it this day. Yeah, this was this year. See, and that like that's a perfect example. They're all over the place. Just stay with it, pull, stay nice and tight to the down block and insert and get who, the first opposite color jersey that shows up. See, like half of our kids don't even realize that we're about to snap the ball. And that, like, that one of our biggest ones is, like, as I talked about during, like, practice must, is your tempo drill, is you're doing it on air, so they should just be calling random calls or no calls and just following their tracks and running to where they're supposed to be. Okay, 3-3 three, three with the tight end, so they're going to bring up that extra overhang. I don't know what our game plan was right here, but he left it all the way to the back side. So he's got an overhang and a stack backer that the tight end doesn't go to. I don't know what we were doing right there. So it's not, we're not the only ones that have, or not just you guys that have issues, I can't even spit it out, is we have kids that still do the same thing too. That's your guy. We don't block safeties. Leave that for the quarterback. But the receiver's coming down, so was that maybe? Uh, so, I, well, I think what happened is I actually want to say that he alerted that it was corner cat was coming. And so against most of these teams that in the Pac-12, if you point out that it's corner cat, they have an auto adjust that the safety now comes, and then that guy takes you in man. Um, so I'm, I'm guessing that something like that happened. Like for a little bit earlier in the play, but you never know. Or they could have adjusted it that that was the only play we were running out of that formation, so they were guessing. 